Curious to know what happened to the Las Vegas real estate market for April 2020? Well, that's what I'm talking about today, and I'm starting right now. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Angela O'Hare, your favorite Las Vegas realtor. And welcome to my May issue of my monthly market update for Southern Nevada. And in this issue, I will be going over April 2020 numbers. Overall, the month of April was somewhat what we had expected and it's in line with the rest of the nation, which was pretty bleak. I mean, it wasn't too bleak, but it was a little bleak. And we knew that the volume of sales would go down. That was absolutely in the cards. I mean, yeah, duh. <laughs> Especially when jobs were furloughed or lost and we had stay at home orders, everyone did what they needed to do. So we obviously saw less activity in the Las Vegas real estate market. But the good sign amongst all this craziness is that the real estate market for the month of April did not crash and people are still buying and builders are still building but the pipeline of sales obviously has been shrinking amongst this whole coronavirus. So for the month of April, there was 1,971 single family homes that sold, which is down 28.5% from March and down 31.4% from April, 2019. And the medium sales price of previously owned single family homes went from 319,000 in March to 310,000 in April which is down 2.8% and then up 6.3% from the prior year, which is, I think, a good sign that we're still up in the median sales price compared to last year and that we only took a $9,000 price, medium price decrease. A lot of people anticipated probably the medium sales price to go down a little further than that, but um, I think 9,000 is not too bad with all things considered. And another stat that I've been recently paying attention to as it sheds some light as to what's going to happen to future months is pending sales. And a pending sale actually is homes that went into contract for that month. Now, some of the sales that went pending in April closed in April, but the remaining actually are going to be closing in the month of May. Hence the reason for looking at the pending sales which is a good indicator of what the sales is going to look like in the near future. This number two, as expected, dropped significantly. April saw 2,377 homes pending, which is down 14% from March and 41.4% from April, 2019. So obviously the good thing about seeing is pending sales is that we can see what's going to happen for the future. And if it's 2377 pending sales, that's actually pretty good. And it's more than what we sold in the month of April, which was what 1971. So I don't think the market's slowing down as everyone had thought it was going to. We did not crash. There are still buyers out there buying while there were less homes put into contract, which is pending sales and less homes that sold, we also saw less listings go on the market last month, which is a double edged sword. Just as I've talked before in previous videos is when you have low um, inventory and you have a higher demand that will cause the price changes. And that is probably why the medium sales price still did not take a huge dive because we still have buyers out there that can and are able to buy here in the Las Vegas Valley and don't rely on the casino industry. A lot of people think that um, Vegas solely relies on the casino industry and it doesn't. We have so many other jobs out here besides the casinos and, and the entertainment industry and, and then the service industry. There's a lot more to the city than the strip or downtown Las Vegas. So for April, we had 2,516 new listings which is down 30.2% from March and down 41.6% from the prior year. Quite simply, many people just decided not to place their home on the market for the month of April due to the coronavirus. And do you blame them? 
I don't blame them. Who wants people coming in your home, traipsing in your home, leaving their germs all over the place? Uh, what did become popular last month and across the country was um, either Zoom calls, FaceTime, Facebook Messenger, everyone's doing virtual tours. So that's very popular. And if you are thinking about buying in Las Vegas and you are out of town, your agent can definitely do a virtual tour for you or FaceTime, go to the home for you and, and look at it. Um, I've done that a couple of times for my clients and it works out pretty well. The only key thing about doing these virtual tours is not getting a feel of the neighborhood or the home. I mean, I'm a feelings type person, so I like to assess how the area feels before I make the judgment. So there's pros and cons to it all. With lower inventory and still having the demand, as I mentioned previously, it's going to cause the numbers to either remain the same or continue going up. I have a lot of clients that have been waiting um, in the next couple months to see where the Las Vegas market will land. And I don't see it taking a huge dive as everyone has been predicting. It is definitely not going to be like the 2008 recession. I have a feeling that home prices are um, unfortunately either going to stabilize or continue to rise. I had a friend um, who had a friend sell their house and it was only on the market for like four days and it sold $11,000 over asking price. So when a home is in immaculate condition and updated, it's going to sell fast because of the options that are out there. Um, a lot of people relocate to Vegas uh, for job transfers, so they need to find a home right away. So they're going to find the best home on the block and not even look at the homes that have been on the market or that need updating or that are just absolute, complete, utter grossness. My buyers are waiting for the prices to go down considerably and I don't think it's really going to happen. I read somewhere where sellers are just not budging. They are not decreasing or slashing their prices like everyone had predicted. Obviously, if you are thinking about buying and you are able to, the most important factor is to look to see how long that home has been on the market. If it's been on the market for over 30 days, then obviously you can ask for a lot more concessions than um, if it's been on the market for a few days. I just helped a client last month buy a home and they got $10,000 off of the asking price and the sellers also pay for all their closing costs. For me, the most important thing is not to worry about if you're going to get 10, 20 or $30,000 off. The most important thing is having the seller cover all of your closing costs because typically closing costs are about two to three percent of the purchase price, which is huge savings. Now, if the seller goes down $10,000, it's only maybe 10 to $20 difference in your mortgage payment. It's really not that big of a difference. But if we can get on both ends, then that's great. But sometimes it may not happen. And again, sellers are not budging right now and depends on how desperate they need to sell. If the sellers can wait it out and not have to worry about taking the first offer or any offer, then more power to them. The most important thing for you as a seller is to make sure that your home is move and ready. And what I mean by move and ready is that your home is depersonalized. If you have any personal photos or lots of photos of your family, you need to get rid of it completely. Uh, declutter, get rid of excess furniture, get rid of your knickknacks, get rid of everything. Just make your home very, very bare as bare as possible because when buyers come in they're going to be able to visualize what the room looks like and and how they are going to place their belongings in your home and also do not place the extra stuff in your garage and leave your garage a mess people look in the garages because that's a very important factor a lot of people look at garages and see okay they need to visualize that space as well and if it's packed to to the nine with boxes then you can forget about it get a storage run out of storage for a month or two get a pod um, get rid of things declutter just get rid of it if you haven't used it in a year just get rid of it if you're buying a new home just buy all new things it's always nice to buy new things just kidding but anyway get a get a storage unit don't keep it in the garage there's a total number of 6042 single family homes listed that did not sell in the month of april 
which is expected and it's not as bad as I thought it would be because in all of 2019 that number was in the seven to eight thousand range um, and this was actually up 6.3 percent from March but down 18.7 percent from the prior year there is now 3.1 months of housing supply on the market which is up 48.7 percent from March and up 18.4 percent from the prior year last month that number was 2.1 months of housing supply an expert state to be a balanced market there needs to be six months of inventory so we're still a seller's market or it's still considered a seller's market because we're at 3.1 months of supply and 69.5 percent of the closings for the month of april was on the market for 30 days or less and for march this number was 59 percent and for april 2020 it was 55.6 percent so that's almost 70 percent that the homes are on the market for 30 days or less so what does that number tell you that number tells you that homes are selling faster now and they're not sitting on the market than they were last year or even last month i mean 70 percent is actually a very good number that's a good indicator that the market is actually still semi strong. You know, when 2020 first started out, it was going to be an actually banner year. It was just like burst into the seams how crazy it was. Um, and again, it's a good thing that this coronavirus happened. Um, sad to hear about anyone that's sick or if there were any deaths. However, it has really kind of corrected the market in a way and made it semi more stabilized so that people can afford to buy homes here in Las Vegas. And obviously this is not just a Las Vegas issue, it's across the country. Um, again, people think just because the casinos are shut down and people have lost their jobs that no one's gonna wanna buy a home here in Vegas. But again, Vegas is not just about the strip or downtown, it's not just about the casinos. There's a whole nother world out here that most people do not realize. And last month we expected the sales to be down we knew that these numbers were going to be low but again they're not as low as what everyone had anticipated which is good and bad take it with a grain of salt it is what it is right it'll be interesting to see what happens this month um when i go over in june these numbers i think i think may actually is going to be a lot better than april honestly and i think if you are really wanting to buy now is the time to buy before it actually starts getting crazy again um, because people are waiting and I, I don't know i send listings to my clients and one of my clients had favorited maybe 11 homes and out of 11 of those homes seven of them were already under contract within the, a few days and it was just crazy how fast those homes were going and they were again all move-in ready homes that were semi updated if not fully updated so again if you're thinking about relocating if you're thinking about buying here in las vegas i would really start thinking now and not wait because i don't see major price decreases at all do not see it coming and i could be wrong and i could be um, blowing smoke up everyone's butts <laughs> Just kidding. But I'm, I'm actually fairly good at predicting how the market's gonna land. I did pretty well last year when I was doing my market updates. And if COVID-19 didn't happen, my predictions would have actually come true. Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this monthly market update for May 2020. And if you'd like to download the full report provided by the Las Vegas Realtors, I post a link to it down in the description below. I'm Angela O'Hare, a local Las Vegas realtor, and I'm here to answer all your real estate questions. And as always, if you like this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment down below, share with a friend, and consider subscribing to my channel if you're interested in learning everything and anything about Las Vegas. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one.